Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Golden Sun. This is Little History. Uh, I'm Adam, and we actually have the title screen this time in a shocking turn of events. So, if you missed last or the last time we streamed this, which I guess was what almost three weeks ago, two weeks ago, uh, this is a two gold. Blah, blah, blah. Starting off strong with the words. Uh, this is Golden Sun, a JRPG released in 2001 for the Game Boy Advance, one of the very first titles for that system. And it's freaking awesome. The game should not still be set as near, I updated the stream to not do that. Well that's silly. Uh, sorry, let me see if I can fix that. That's very dumb, I updated this before even going in. Whatever. Fix now. Let's get started. So last time we uh, may have caused a volcanic eruption that may be ruining everything. But now we're in the town of Vault. And we're going to actually meet our next party member very soon. The heart of Angara. So Angara is our first uh, continent and actually where almost all of the main this first game is set. But the wider continent is Wayard, which is a very clever and secretive uh, Japan is a J Japanese phonetics of world. Oops. And uh, we may have lit all the thatch on fire with our very medieval town. Oops. Oh. Not Master Hammond. Oh, well hey, we know we're on the right track, because that looks like it's Cyrus, Minardi, Felix, Axel, and Creighton and Jenna, so we got them! Also for Master Hammett, my guy. My guy. He tries so hard, but he's so bad at everything. Long sword, short sword, battle axe, and mace. I don't actually think I need any of those, because we're plenty strong enough as it is. We check the boxes. He's, he, we're not finding all the swords. By the way, look at that chunky sword. Even in 2001, we have a glorious tradition of uh, chunk. That's so overkill. So gloriously overkill. What? Oh no. Can you help Ivan? Okay. Let us help Ivan. Ivan can read minds. So that's a good time. And he uh, appears to have no sense of personal space. Ooh. Have fun with that dragon wolf. Master Hammett's rod was stolen. Sure, let's help you. None. Yup. Th th thank you, but also please stop. I, yeah, mm, a little bit. I'm sorry. D yeah, yeah, actually, don't do that. Nope. Hey, hey man. Stop, stop doing it. He just, he just keeps doing it. The poor kid never learned personal boundaries. Hey, but... Uh-oh. Big. This is... Yeah, <laughs> you're not wrong. S 
Wait, you never even heard of Synergy, but now you know that we're called the Depths, and I don't think we said that. So, the script is... The script's good. Anyway. Uh, I've... Our guys so far have been pretty balanced. Oh. Not the right button. Let's try that. Also, not the right button. Uh, da -da -da -da. There it is. So. Right, Isaac's pretty balanced. Garrett's pretty physically beefy, though. Um, has a lot less health than we do right now, but look, super low magic. Ivan will fall over if someone looks at him funny, but is all magic all the time. Actually incredibly OP, because he goes real f He moves past and he casts magic. Or synergy. Hey, what's that supposed to be, kid? Kid, don't make- Actually, instead of constantly flop- flumping the- Let me set the shortcut for mine, please. There we go. You just said we weren't reliable. Ugh, kid. You're killing me here. Gee, I wonder if it's this incredibly suspicious looking person. Yup! Nice, we can't prove anything. Except for that. We just immediately proved it. Also, you can me... You can mind read the puppy. Oh, see you, Sharp Knife. So, the incredibly suspicious looking people who came into town shortly before the eruption did it. <sighs> Raise your hand if you're surprised. Uh huh. Uh huh. Anyway, uh, the other thing fun that we heard is that the uh, rod that we're trying to recover is called the Shaman's Rod. So that is a, uh, that's a term. With a lot of connotations kind of attached to it. I don't think we have, nope. Good, I wasn't trying to leave. I'm sorry, Ivan. I was just trying to go, oh. Forgot that we walked into the bottom of town. Let's try that again. Third times with feeling. Uh, anyway. Right, the term shaman primarily emerges, uh, with regards to, uh... Uh, Siberian religious practice. Actually, is where it's first described, but it gets popularized by Mircea Eliada. Who uses it as a term to sort of describe a whole host of non-Christian religious practices. Which is not great, as it turns out. Uh, I don't love that he does that. But... Uh, it still ends up being a really influential sort of term. We're just gonna yoink that, don't mind us. In order to think about religious practices that are dominated by a single figure who travels, who is sort of the seer, etc., for the community, who will travel through ritual means into another world in order to commune with spirits. So, there's kind of two things required. Firstly, the spirit world, which can be influenced by human actions, and the shaman, who is the one who crosses over that. So some sort of totem, uh, or... of this... figure is actually pretty reasonable to include, whether that's a staff, like it is here, or whether that's some other icon or a focal point to help signify status, and to assist in the rituals, right? That's pretty well attested, so... 
on its own, the idea of a shaman's rug is not inherently terrible. That being said, right, is stripped of literally all of that context in the game, as all things are, right? There's not a single thing in here that isn't stripped of context. So... I kinda just gotta roll with it. The term is largely falling out of favor in anthropological studies these days, but we don't we don't really do that anymore. But Japan has a very um, eclectic assortment of sort of European texts and scholarship, and then also uh, 2001 is just a different time. What? What? You guys are just gonna. You're gonna keep keep doing that? Fine, fine. They are acting extraordinarily suspicious. Yeah, let's just let's just Don't worry, this is totally gonna work. Yep. Yep. Totally absolutely no questions about it. Yeah, we got both of them at the same time. And they cast Mind Read. He shut his eyes! What's he doing? Oh no! We're so spooky! We're so spooky. Weird kid. They sure did. They took a lot of stuff. We also have taken a couple of things, though, so... Oh, uh, well. Nope. Fine. Do I... Do I always come through? Thanks, Garrett. Thank, thanks. Uh, maybe it's in this box. Nope. Darn. Well, I looked. I have nowhere else I can turn to. None at all. Nope. Not even slightly. Absolutely nowhere. Oh. Well, this is not ideal. We're just gonna use our knife here and get our guy free. And... He got kidnapped. It's terrible. True, truly terrible. We're definitely not gonna raid all those chests or anything. Anyway, who could have guessed? Generic thieves are generic. Also, just super good sprite work. Look how, look at how pretty all these sprites are, even though the guys are purple. Yeah, he he made a mistake. Uh, who's ready for a side quest? Set up much later. Named after the noble thief. Lunpa. A.k.a. Robin Hood. And Robin Hood's son, apparently also a thief. But the Donpa. The Donpa's bad news. Steals anything. Uh, no. He, yes, he, chat, he did just say, even if we return everything we stole and apologize, it still is a crime. Well. Well. Get him. Bandit, thief, and thief. Oh. 
we'll hit them with that, and we'll hit them with a good old flare, and we'll hit them with a good old actual lightning bolt. I'm sure this is fine. Fourteen, seventeen, four. Okay. Uh, and Ivan is now blinded. It's a shame he's never using physical attacks. Dang it, dude. Really? Ah, uh, that actually did next to nothing. Let's just maul one of these guys. I have no gym. Okay. You have no gym. But you do have lightning bolts. Right now, you know, our syn Ivan's synergy is pretty much all perfectly bog standard magic. Yeah, there we go. Oh no, that's a crit. Ow. That was rude. Actually, you know what? Let's use our gym. Let's see what Flint does. And... He pretty much just hits hard. Luckily, Garrett is pretty unbothered. This framework is so good. And now we can summon Venus. You know, uh, Venus, the uh, Roman cognate to Aphrodite. Grows a love, and uh, if we accept some very weird argumentation, there actually is an argument to be made for being Earth, but largely this is coming out of medieval uh, alchemical traditions, not actually any sort of reference to the goddess. So it's an association of the planet Venus with uh, the Aristotelian element Earth. Oddly, not the Earth being associated with Earth, but their associations are correct of Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter being the four planets that influence the four elements as they manifest on Earth. So... Accepting that, you know, it actually works pretty well, but it's one of the first of very, very many examples of uh, the traditions and the reference uh, sort of being muddled. But yeah, uh, you can also think of like statues that are assigned the name Venus, even though that's even more iffy. That's even more iffy, but... Hey, what do you mean? We weren't even close. It wasn't even close. Why are you saying that? Like, Garrett wasn't the only one who was even vaguely close to dying. And even then, he started at half health and ended at a quarter health. Oh yeah, stealing from others is wrong, by the way. Uh, chat, ignore the mint and the sleep bomb that I, uh, stole. Yup. Yup. Uh, stealing is wrong. Uh, you should not go to Lunka right now. You- the people there are too strong. Going after Felix and the other. Uh, you just said you wouldn't do that, Ivan. Nah. That being said, this saves us from another interpretive dance sequence, so I think we'll take it. And honestly, it was just pretty good exposition anyway of them just using their powers to do stuff. <sighs> Stealing in the midst of a volcanic eruption. Exactly. You understand perfectly. Hang on, wait, wait. How long is a long, long time? Like, this was just some petty... This was just some petty theft. You won't forget this? Oh no. What will I do? So sad. So tragic. Bye. Now, I am curious why there's swords in this loft. Like, what's the point of it? Hmm. So... 
precious urn. Pretty useless. I'll be honest, not not the best loot. That that's a little bit better. But yes, they did steal a religious icon, which is not not good. Not good at all. Uh, stealing religious icons from a community is really bad form. Like that's the first thing that really I mean. I mean, both the urn and the statue being, uh, the choices are actually really good choices to communicate how despicable the thieves are supposed to be. Because the urn, presumably, uh, is a family family heirloom and or a, if it's a cremation urn, then literally the ancestors, and so the family history, right there. And then, the... Uh, Sanctum being the religious household, so the local spirits for the vaguely defined religion of Wayard. Or religions of Wayard. I mean, that's that's real bad, because in a lot of pre-modern cultures, there's the idea that, well, the gods, such as they are, are first, very literal, and two, live either in or where their statues are. And so, the Sanctum being a sacred place makes a lot of sense as the house for the god. And if you remove the god from the house, then you literally removed the religious center of the community and the god itself from the house. Which is the bad, bad news. That's really bad news. Isaac, and Garrett, and Ivan. Well... I haven't communicated, um... That's bad. The cutscene is finally almost over. I will say, th this game has a problem of liking its text boxes a little too much. It's pretty well written, apart from they talk... a lot. They, they talk a lot, a lot. Oh, come on. Yeah, you saved us all the- You saved us all the exposition by reading our minds. And yet, they just told it to us again. Nah. Come on, Ivan. We we like your zappy magic. Don't do this to us. Why are you like this? Ah. <sighs> uh, items. We have a bandit sword, which is worse. But is better than... It's better for Garrett, so... And... It's our first weapon that has a power attached to it. Because a bunch of weapons in this game uh, all have a sort of special ability attached to them. Which is super cool. And we're going to see a lot of mythological references attached to that. Uh, some D&D references. I'll be honest, so, some extremely D&D references. Wait, we just yoinked a bone? We just yoinked... Sure. We got two bones. Heck yes. Well, at least we have permission, technically. Alright, let's stop by the mayor's house like we were told to. And I even already went out towards Lenpa, which is bad news. Thank you. Now what are you going to give us? Water of life, oh. Oh, that's really good. Okay, look for a cave in the mountains of the Goma Range, northeast of us. 
Once you pass it, you'll reach Bilibin. Now, I don't think those are mythological references, but... Uh... I may be wrong on that, and if chat, if any of you recognize things that I don't, do say something, cause... You know, my specialization is in medieval Europe, which means I know a little bit of my classical tradition. But... I'm hardly an expert in everywhere to everyone, so if you recognize things, you say so. Anyway, uh, get on my way. Oh yeah, Aunt Aleph is still doing stuff. Yep. Thanks. Bye. We have now completed Vault. Huzzah. Anyway, we're supposed to go up this way. What was that? Oh yeah, that was my thing got set. Oh! Our ghosts have reappeared. It's an amaze. How amazing. Ow. Aw, that did very little. But we can just throw an earthquake and Uh, that was a mistake. Because now you're just gonna defend. Okay. Oh, that's a trick. Bye. There's another crit though. Uh, Isaac seems to be doing a lot better on this whole crit thing. Though. Even though Garrett's got the one special ability that I'm trying to show off. <sighs> anyway. Um, heal. Heal again. This should be... A cave that I can't do anything with right now. A cave I can do nothing at all in right now. And... Uh-huh. Oh. Darn. Whatever will we do? We can't enter the town of Lunpa, so I guess we're just done. Oh. And still fails. Uh, we're not finding a lot interesting. Right, we talked about zombies last week and how, um, there it is. Well, that kind of sucked. We'll get some better ones later on, though. Anyway. Right, last week when we talked about zombies, we talked about how they're, um, not at all what D&D made them out to be. Well, not D&D, but what a lot of, uh, American media, especially in film, turned them into as sort of incredibly generic undead, because that's not what they were, um, or what a zombie is in Haitian religions. Anyway, uh... I suppose we'll go this way, since we can't actually help out Ivan in any meaningful way. Hmm. That being said, there's actually a problem. I actually need Ivan. I can, I can move you, so... Yeah, I can't do anything here. Okay, so I need to locate Ivan first. Hmm... Where are you? It's been many years since I played this game. I adore this game greatly, but it has been a lot of years. Ghosts doing ghosty things. Also hitting so hard. Like it's just me. Exactly. And at least the music is good. 
Play as Walt again. I wonder if anyone says where, where I even went, because I should chase him down. Because like, we could go this way, but we know that the bridge is out. So, that's right out. Now. Isaac's taking a lot of damage here. Does he? Oh, does he just catch up to there when, if I fail? Does he join in one part? Or does he join over at the Goma Bridge? He joins in one part. Okay, I just I just didn't stick around long enough. Okay. Oh, Goma Bridge. Okay. Fair enough. I just moved too quickly. I'm too darn impatient. Fine. Thank you, I do appreciate it. So we'll just head in here. And I guess we'll try moving the thing I know we can't move. And then go from there. I knew he joined automatically someone. I just can't remember when that someone was. Hmm. There we go. There's our cutscene trigger. Voila. Magical. Hello, Ivan. Yeah, yes. Ivan, Ivan, of course there's something you can do. It's called Whirlwind. You did it. What, why are you, why are you here? Ah, oh. he's such a sweet kid. Y'all, y'all need to remember that. Mm-hmm, joining in quest. And he's back in the party. Are we trying to get to Billabin? Yes, we are. How could you have guessed? We could use someone who knows who has ever been outside of Vale. L literally ever. Anyway, Goma Cave. Uh, I should not all attack the same person. Oh, the zombies got a little bit stronger, it looks like. Okay. There we go. That should turn out okay. Uh, that is the... Uh... Kind of. Actually. Not quite. Uh, G-O-H-M-A are the spiders from Zelda. A small but important difference. Ooh! They actually have a new part of- oh, no. Ow. Really? What's your ghost? Is that strictly speaking necessary? And we'll just, like, hit you a lot with stuff. 
I like how the ghost is actually like dressed up in things. So it actually looks like the, uh, our very D and D wizard's cloak hat. And then our skeleton. You know, the idea of an animated skeleton is hardly new or unique to any specific culture. I think that's been pretty much as long as there have been skeletons. There have been people going like, wow, skeletons are real spooky. But I think the most obvious tradition this is almost certainly drawing on is uh, role-playing games like D&D and then its predecessors in the RPG genre. Anyway. Hey look, it's a Mars gen. We already have one Venus gen, so there's a Mars one coming in. Who, by the way, is extremely frustrating, because uh, some Jin will automatically join you, some Jin you have to fight. And if they fight, they like running away. Because... why not? Ah, dang it. Anyway, um... Will had, I assume... Uh, is most specifically a reference to uh, Will of the Wisp. As a, I mean, Death's heads being surrounded by flame are a very common thing in media, but the fact that they're using Will for this skeletal head is uh, very heavily associated with the Will of the Wisp, which is mostly an early modern thing uh, in. Uh, Ireland, and some other places. That's phrased as a sort of guide, but a guide that's also a massive jerk that will try and kill you by leading you into the swamp where you will drown. In short, uh, do not recommend. Not a good time. Oh boy, this is gonna hurt. Rumble in the jungle. Ow. Oofed. Not even. It takes so much damage. Strictly unnecessary. Now, a lot of spooks in this cave, but, uh. Lots of spooks in every cave, as it turns out. No, not the right button. And I do spend synergy every time I hit the wrong button, by the way. Just in case you were curious. I mean, hey, if you're trying to go into the bogs, and the flames in the bogs, that's on you. Right, the Will of the Wisps aren't to blame, but if you're trying to go into the bogs, and do their stuff. But, uh, the idea is that if you cannot get killed by them, they'll leave you to bury treasure, but um, they're gonna try and get you killed by drowning. And that's pretty unpleasant, so we kinda recommend you don't do that. Ha! <laughs> Rasuro, you're not... you're not wrong. But luckily, we're right at the beginning of the game, so there's no backtracking yet. It'll just happen later. Hmm. So that was not actually going to anywhere. Um... Soothing stuff. Interesting. Lots of heals. Lots of heals this round. Actually, no. Uh, I need to save Isaac's MP because he's the only one who can heal. Boom, boom. Done and casts fire. This is a whole, um, so, this doesn't seem to actually go anywhere, so I guess we go back. The classic experience, go back down, now that we drop the thing, and go here. And then go up again. Hey, look at that. 
We're where we need to get to. Four. Ivan's almost dead already. Fine. Just don't die, Ivan. I screwed that up. Well, only lost one. Okay. Because this game, the one thing that I think uh, Dark Dawn is a just straight up improvement on is that auto battle is good and auto auto change target is good. And I don't really um, believe in that in this video game. So you can absolutely just. Kill a guy on the first person and your party of four will then just stand there and do nothing the rest of the time. The entire rest of it. Anyway, uh, let's bring out the strongest stuff we've got. Flint. Just attack because that's stronger. Hey Kappa Crap, glad you can join us. Hey, he didn't run away. And we'll summon and we'll attack. And then we'll pass. Uh, Reagan. Don't you dare run away. Not when I'm so close. Hey, he just cast Flare instead. Ow. Holy moly. But, but we did it. Oh boy, I hope finals are going well. The Mars Genie Forge. And get it. Thanks. Thanks, random tutorial man. We appreciate it. Nope. Oh. Again. That's fine. Actually, we're pretty much all okay. Uh, let's check what our new forge does. If we set. It does nothing. But makes us stronger. Um, but. If we uh, unleash it, boost party attack with Flint's Fury. So, like Flint, Flint just deals damage to someone. Uh, Flare is going to make us hit a lot harder. Attack, fire, red. There we go. Explosions. Now we got an oil drop, which uh, is basically a Molotov. It deals fire to people. And... I think that's basically the end, the end of the dungeon. We have not too much backtracking required. Actually though, I will say, right, this... Well, that's probably not good. Uh, this game has relatively little backtracking compared to Lost Age. Lost Age is like nothing but backtrack, nothing but backtracking. But you have a boat, so it's actually pretty cool. Also, we are not going to worry about getting 100% completion because uh, that would be insane. That'd be absolutely nuts. Yeah, that, that helps too. Uh, but we are going to try and get some of the stuff, like some of the uh, weirder summons. Uh, like, I think the Odysseus summon is in this game. If we can manage uh, things like, I know in Lost Age, like there's the Isis summon on the, t on the very end. We can get some of those. Those are obviously mythological references of a sort. And therefore, we're gonna try and get them because that's kind of the whole point of these streams, right? Uh, I'm a historian by training, and so I wanna take a look at how this game uh, uses historical and mythological references. Ancient trees developing strange powers. Maybe the power is what caused the curse! Good job, Art. 
That is the most bard looking bard. I mean, you couldn't get a more D&D &D character if you tried. Wild. Okay, I suppose we should go talk to this Lord McCoy. Please just ignore the strange tree of plants. I mean, if you say so. in a different way. Oh darn. Who could have guessed? Indeed. Yeah, it's... I don't know, yeah, I remember. It's like all the way around. Jupiter Jane are good though, so we're gonna need to do that even if it's kind of silly. Right, so theoretically this uses like a palisade uh, as its main destruction, but gotta say, uh, not the right button again. I will know the controls to this one day. This is not true. I've been screwing up the controls for this game for 15 years. I have no intention of fixing that now. But anyway, the uh, point. No. Ooh. Attack with mighty wind gusts. Okay. The the point is we're gonna try and get as much as we can uh, of what the game reasonably offers and. Even if there's a whole lot of backtracking, we're gonna hopefully learn some pretty neat stuff about how this game approaches history and historical images. I have not played Blasphemous. It's definitely a game I want to play, though, so... Hunter Sword, yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty big boost. Tickets, which I guess goes there. And I think. Let's do that. Oh. Fine. Fine. And the artifact. points by either of those. Artifacts are ones that do good stuff as. Oh, um... I will need to take a look at the Judgment Summon, but there is actually a specific reference. Um, I believe it's an amalgamation of a bunch of the beasts from the book Revelation. But I'll need to actually take a look at that. Uh, to make sure of what that is before I start talking. You know, as soon as we get four Venus Jenny, uh... We will absolutely be talking about that summon, because it is rad. And then we'll also be trying to figure out things like, you know, what the heck the, um... The Odysseus summon is doing. Because it's definitely not just an anime girl. Named Odysseus. Is that so? I tried. Nope. Uh huh. You just want to live in a big house. Nope, we haven't. Well, that's good to know. 
Interesting. The music here is actually super cool. Uh, cause of course, you know, what it's doing is just... Well, it needs to be high status. And what is higher status than Baroque music? The answer is of course nothing. Nothing is higher status. And so, also, the building has a Works that, right? This isn't a castle. The, 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 hey, you heard me perfectly correct, Capricra, but I have no explanation, only questions. For now. We'll see if we can't find we'll see if we can't find something resembling an explanation somewhere in in Odysseus when we eventually get them. Anyway, right, this is not a castle in the medieval sense. Even though a lot of our architecture in this town is medieval-esque, right? So we've got thatch windows, it's more early modern than it is medieval, but, right, a thatch roof, the waddle and dob construction style, etc, etc. Thatch roofs, stone chimneys. We come in here, and suddenly this is, this is Victorian. Maybe a little bit earlier? I could see Georgian, but really my immediate thought here is sort of, uh, 19th century, a uh, style that's called a fantasy castle, which is pretty much as the name suggests. Uh, it's popular starting in the 1700s, but then really popular in the 1800s, where you have spires and towers and sort of castle e constructions, but trying to fit the image of what a castle one is supposed to be in their imagination, rather than any sort of uh, representation of what a castle actually is or does. Let's actually uh, have a new attack so I can preserve me. Controls are hard, apparently. I am doing unusually badly at this again. Yeah. Right, I, I wouldn't really say that that's a particularly a... Gee, I wonder if I had to take some shortcuts. Well, um... Good luck with that, guys. But yeah, anyway, um... The fancy castles, which... Yeah, you can better describe them as manners rather than true castles. Like, right, because they're not controlling space. They're purely for rich people to show off. Uh, but, they're incredibly popular across European nobility. Uh, Noe Schlanstein is perhaps the most famous of them, uh, given that it's the inspiration for now. Uh, for Cinderella's castle, for, for Disney. But, there are some absolutely gorgeous ones all across Europe. Uh, one of my personal favorites is Cardiff Castle, which really looks like the man that we just saw. Like, it looks exactly like it, actually. Hmm, yes. A rat. Such a good... Wow, these rats are beefy. Fair enough. Hitting for four. I'm proud of you, Ivan. And... There we go. Hopefully, I think there's a gin in here? Nay. Okay. Darn. I'm gonna try and keep an eye out for suspicious looking places where Jin can spawn, but I, uh, I'm not gonna waste time running in circles grinding, because there are not really new enemies. I mean, I guess the Rat Warrior? Nah, I just did the thing. Can I just order the Rat Warrior? But I don't know that I have a whole lot creative to say about that. Ooh. So we did just get another level. And we learned, as a result, we learned... Spire. Which is... Well... 
a single target, ruin your days for this battle. Well, we drop a stalactite on someone's head. Not for sure that was going to be a thing. Oh well. Let's see, where are we going? Up this way then? Yeah, here is Kalima. Or, sorry. Here is the forest in question. We should probably go look at the town first before we go deal with um, the forest. Because we probably want to know what's going on, because what's going on is not. not great. As it turns out, not not ideal. Oh no! Something's falling from the sky. so much trouble. This is a fun game, guys. We're super screwed. Though, man, is... They sure made the flashy blue domes as... Um... Painful as possible. Really, Ivan? You know what these domes are? Question marks? Yep! Okay, are, are you sure? Oh yeah! Oh, you guys might be pretty far behind if you're only getting to Neuschwanstein. But yes, it's very pretty and very defensible. Yeah. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. You guys have to focus really hard, and then somehow we automatically did it. Okay, good. Ta-da! Critical hits are a thing in universe. It's not a gameplay contrivance. Uh oh. Here we go again. And again, um, I'm sorry for the flashy lights. That is just what the game decided it wants to do. So. Uh. Epilepsy warnings apparently weren't a thing. Room. Well, uh, those, those sure are. These people who are immune to Tret's glamour. Have they come to save the village? It will not be enough. Uh-huh. We are done. Well, we know that now. Thank you for the exposition. Whirl and Tret. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thank you, Laurel, for all of the exposition. And, you know, the most obvious point of comparison here. Well. We're gonna we're going to go see uh, the town of Kalima first to see what happened, but 
The obvious point of comparison is uh, the Lord of the Rings, because this is just not Fangorn. This is the place similar to but legally distinct from Fangorn Forest. Including the plotline about uh, the Ents getting really pissed off that the people, or orcs, are cutting down their forest. Right, and so, I mean, it's most blatantly obvious with the name Tret, because, you know, well, Laurel is also the name of a type of tree. Uh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. The Tret appears to be a corruption of Treant. Which uh, was invented for uh, by Bet get get words by Gary Gygax uh, for Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, that's pretty much the original point. Um, though it's etymologically derived from. Actually, maybe Tolkien does it. Nope. Uh... Okay. Yeah. So Gygax invents Treant based off Ent from Lord of the Rings, but with Tree. It's a tree end, which is totally different from all the other ends that the Lord of the Rings has. Right? Totally. In like, indubitably different. So, yeah, this is straight out of exclusively and entirely the role playing tradition. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Tolkien did not invent Treant, he just invented Ent. And when I say invented Ent, he uh, sort of derives it from an old word for giant. Anyway, uh, let's use Flint here because that will give us a new summon that we can check out. Also, we have a new person there in the Rat Soldier, who is pretty neat, probably. Uh, the best point of comparison I can think of for this rat soldier is... Oh, perfect. Basically just like a kobold, right? I'm not seeing a whole lot... I mean, well, those are technically lizard soldiers. Some sort of goblin or kobold or something like that. Even though the game also has those, I think? Uh... I don't know of any obvious mythological parallel to specifically a rat soldier. Also, this was Ramses, as in Ramses the Great, as in the uh, the Pharaoh. Admittedly, Ramses the Great is not the only Pharaoh named Ramses. Uh, he is the Ramses the Second, technically. Still the wrong button. And honestly, Ramsey's the third is cooler anyway. But. Oh boy, I am just straight up out of synergy. That's gonna be bad news for me, probably. Oh well. Hopefully, we'll get a side stone somewhere nearby. Oh! Okay, he just he just yeeted away. E exactly, Cabo Crab, right there. Uh, derived. It's derived from. Uh, technically, I think it's. I should I just pulled up the etymology. There we go. Uh, yeah, it's. So ent or etten are two related words in Old English for giant. And so Tolkien adopts the Old English word into Modern English, just borrows it. Yeah, they're kind of nullish, aren't they? Anyway, uh, there is something else I wanted to show you guys. Cause... Every two things, uh, every two gin you use changes, uh, what class you are. 
so for Isaac, being a squire, his second chin turns him into a knight. A very standard medieval thing, right? If we give someone a chin of a different type, they change classes. So currently, you know, uh, Garrett becomes a brute. And in fact, in a Venus and a Mars gym turn someone into a brute. Or Garrett being already fire uh, element, he just turns into a brute anyway. Wind plus Earth turns into a pilgrim. Or sorry, Wind plus Fire turns into a pilgrim. And so, they'll get totally different sets so if I take a look at what synergy they've got, he's now... We lost the ability to heal. In fact, we lost a lot of our synergies. Uh, we're going to get into a battle with this just to show it's... just to see what we've got. Two rat soldiers, perfect. Synergy, cool. We can delude people now. We can cast Gaia, i.e. the, uh, you know, the Titan of Earth from Greek mythology. Growth and Blast. And... Wind Slash. That is correct, Capricra. The Eden is most likely included from Aoten, which is of course another... another place of really obvious cognate, uh... Eoten and Jotun are absolutely linked, um, so the Old Norse word for the giants and Eden are very, very much linked. Um, cool! And, by the way, also, you know, here's another one. Garrett turned... turns from a, uh... is a page if we give, uh... If Garrett has a wind, Jupiter Jin is a page. So, the point is, right, we get some really interesting combinations. And from various sorts of jobs of a sort. Right? I mean, a pilgrim is not really, not exactly what I would describe as a permanent job, but it's definitely a important thing as it turns out, because uh, pilgrims are all over the place in sort of the medieval and late antique traditions of people who are traveling for religious purposes. Turns out that's not exactly a rare idea. But pages, squires, knights, all that stuff. Absolutely. Oh yeah, and granite reduces how much damage we take in everything. It's good. Look at all this good stuff. So anyway! Uh, I do want to just kind of mess around with the summons too, to see what summons we unlock when we're mixing Ginny, because uh, we should already be unlocking some pretty cool combinations. Even with just two. And there's a lot of those that we are unlocking stuff. Oh, that's just part of the attack. That's not helpful. Let's do one of these. Now we'll see what we'll summon. Well, these are going a whole lot of nowhere. But yeah, anyway. So, summon. Uh, we cannot summon anything with one Venus and one Jupiter. Fair enough. Fair enough. And Venus, we hope we take them out. Yeah, there we go. Can we actually? 
that one you spent. If we just do that, I just want to see what we've got. This isn't going anywhere. Um, let's just go off this way instead. That looks more effective. Okay, Rat Soldier, Rat Soldier, and a Will Plus. Sort of. Okay, yep, we've got nothing right now. Very well. Oh, yeah. The random encounter tables in this game are absolutely kind of crazy as to just how many different things you can get. No. Oh. Okay. Fine. And we're gonna start getting more. Uh, a lot more. Options in not very much time. Oh hey look, it's a drone bee. By the way, the drone bee is wearing armor and uses a bow. Or no, sorry, uses a tiny spear. Which is, uh, one, adorable. And two, there is no point two. It's just adorable. we can, like, grab this yet. I think we need the grab synergy for that. But yeah, you know, I'm curious. I, I'm, I am very curious as to whether there is actual marginalia of Bee Knight already. I feel like there might be. I'm not super sure, but I think there might be. Because you're right, it is pretty fabulous. These rats are invincible. That's alright, a lot of experience off of them. See what we can get. Um, again, I'm, I'm not super confident on that. Um, on saying, oh yeah, there's, there's definitely for sure uh, B marginalia because I can't think of any. But I do tend to do just kind of silly stuff with bees because you need to make bees big enough to say that there are now bees. But uh, it does. It does, however, gel with things like, oh, who is it? Is it Aquinas who praises B? Um, I think Aquinas praises them. Augustine might too. Lots of medieval evil authors really like beer, bees because of how industrious they are and how devoutly they uh, will sacrifice themselves in defense of the community. Which is, you know, kind of excellent. It's kind of really excellent. Uh, that was bad. I actually don't want to do it that way. You go this way. And then I should be able to run all the way around. And not get stuck. And go push. Okay. Uh... That being said, bees are also um, sometimes associated with uh, demonic influence as a sort of... Ow. That was rude. Just as like some sort of way for demons to attack the human body because it turns out they do hurt a lot when you get stung by a bee. They're mean like that. 
But... Uh, do you not touch Floodgate Gate Switch? Are you sure? Are you sure, game? What if I did touch the Floodgate Switch and didn't tell anyone? Would that be acceptable? Well, that's... A nuisance. I wonder if we can... There is no chance for us to do something silly. No? We can't- we can't do log rolling? I thought we could do log rolling. Oh well. We can, however, reposition it and then just close the floodgate again. And it'll just fill up. So that's where I need that to go. But... I wonder if there's a way to set that up to actually get somewhere else. Because that's too far to jump. That doesn't move. Not really a lot of point in moving this one. this all the way up to this side. I wonder where that ends up. That's the right distance to jump there. And then that all connects. But how do I get onto it? That's the question. Hmm. Ah. I got it. This is totally a worthwhile use of my time, right? One chest, all this puzzle solving. One whole puzzle. And it will magically fill up again, with a very weird static effect. Yet. It better be good. A fur coat. That's not bad. That's, we'll take that. Resists water. Yo, that's pretty good. That's actually really quite good. So that'll basically just have water damage. Which on Isaac is kind of a big deal, because I think water is technically the element he's vulnerable to. I'm not sure though. The system of like strengths and weaknesses of elements is actually really complicated in this game. For no obvious reason. It just kind of is. Actually, that's true of a lot of things in this game. They're kind of arbitrarily high effort. Which I'm fond of, because obviously. I, I like when games are putting effort into their systems, and are putting a lot of thought into it, and it's one of the reasons I continue to love this game so much. Right, the world building and the way the system interacts with itself is actually all really, really well thought out, even if it doesn't necessarily think that it should be. There we go. Uh, that's a troll. Yet another thing. Hmm, let's fire you. Please, flare. And then... Use Gust. So, uh, Troll is a... Is a name I have a lot of feelings about. <laughs> I think it's a good way to introduce that idea. Because... 
Uh, I think this is the first one that it would be explicitly Norse. Uh, cause troll is a word borrowed into English from Old Norse. Uh, that is a sort of generic word for monster, our monstrous being. And often really unfortunately female coded, but uh, when it gets borrowed into English, there is a whole lot um, of coding that gets lost in the process, because truck is a word that can mean like sorcerer, monster, giant, monstrous cat, demon, undead, nasty unpleasant person, uh, unpleasant living person, etc, etc, etc. Lots of etc. Indeed. Uh, when it gets borrowed into English, thanks in a large part to uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, again, uh, all that coding gets lost and it rapidly becomes, uh, in Tolkien's sense, quite simple. That there is uh, a big tall monster who hits things very hard. And that's what we got here. We got a big tall monster that hits things very hard. And that's okay, right? We don't... We do not always need things to be a super in-depth reference, especially when the reference is kinda nasty in what it is. Ow. Well, that's not good. Leaving defense is kinda bad news. Uh, you know, that's a good, that's a good question. Uh, you're right, but it, but it is described as a troll. I'm gonna check where Billy Goat's Gruff is from. Oh, it's Norwegian. Okay, that's, that's why, that's why a troll is mentioned, because it's, uh, the folk stories that do that are Norwegian. So, Scandinavian language preserving uh, some sort of reflex of the term troll. And, yeah, I mean, that's totally reasonable. Uh, the idea there, I suppose, is that by the early modern period, and really by the modern period, it becomes the case that they are losing all the nuances of the meanings from medieval material and becoming more straightforwardly mon malevolent, ugly, big monster in the form that we get from the three Billy Goats Gruff and all the trolls under the bridge. I'm pretty sure it's... So that is a genuine folk tradition from the 1800s. And I think... Right... I don't think it exists a whole lot um, in the medieval material. I'm not thinking of anything there. So, where it's coming from in the modern material is just, in its most simple, the idea that the uh, the bridge is this sort of crossing point. And crossing points are places that you will always run into monsters in. Right? There's nothing good that comes from a crossing point, this sort of liminal space over a river, is a really important place where you'll get a bunch of stuff. And Captain Crab, I totally agree. Uh, if you did not, uh, I don't know if you were around then, uh, but for anyone in chat who wants to hear more of Norwegian fa uh, and Icelandic folk stories, uh, I read a bunch of them when we were playing uh, Rocky, uh some months ago. But that game came out, uh, since it's so heavily inspired by Norwegian and Icelandic folk stories. I actually read some of the collections uh, from both uh, Norway and Iceland as part of those streams, to just settle in, have some nice storytelling hours. So, 
But if you want to hear more, go check out those streams. Because there were uh, stories about all kinds of things. Elves and trolls and yeah. Uh, yeah. The, I suppose, I suppose modern tends to call them like Neckers. Even though it's not a, not a fabulous name. Well, let's grab this and then, ooh. Oh, that's... Interesting. There's a ring with... Uh, problem. I have to reset it and do this again. So, yeah, anyway, uh... Lots of things, sort of, uh, words. I completely lost that train of thought. I don't know where I was going. Oops, I get I'm getting distracted by all the good vibes of the game. And these adorable drone bees. I mean, look at how cute they are, even if they're trying to stab us. A lot, repeatedly. Which is actually very mean of them. Won't lie. Like, not, not a great look. Ow. And I hit really hard. I hit really freaking hard. I wonder how close we are to levels. Does it actually say? XP. It doesn't say XP to the next level. Darn. That's alright. 9 MP and we're done. Also, there's a size stand up there, so that should... Oh. I can't actually do anything with that spider. Uh, do I need this? I don't need to use the size stand. I don't need to redo that run for the sake of a size stand. Let's just go climbing instead. Hmm. Ooh! A no. A new thing. Uh, visual design is again like very like the ghosts. It's very sort of D and D wizard. Look at that pointy hood. Look at that pointy hood. Anyway, uh, I wonder. Actually, that's potentially that's potentially cool. Uh, so there's both. Gnome as in the, uh, creature, which we mostly know these days as sort of garden gnomes, which, I wonder if I can find a story about them. Those are just garden gnomes. Come on. Okay. So, fits super well with uh, magical, with the sort of uh, alchemical traditions that make up this game. That's the word I was looking for. I forgot the word alchemy, guys. Uh, tells you how today's going. But uh, gnomes appear to first be introduced by uh, the alchemist. A natural philosopher Paracelsus, as and their name is derived uh, from the Greek word uh, for to know. So, actually, this is related to the word uh, gnosis, where we get Gnosticism. Which is extremely cool, as it turns out. But, uh, are sort of magically inclined humanoids. So they're not actually old, um, in any substantive- Hey, there you are. Ah, crap, this one attacks. Well, that's not good. Ah, 
This shit not tell you very much at all. Yeah. And I was mm -hmm. left. Uh, those two can heal themselves while I summon Herb and Herb. Uh, uh, dang, the shoot through the field first. Um, this could be bad. Yeah, Garrus did. Frustrating. Because I only have one water of life. And it ran. Hmm. If I wanted, uh, otherwise. So. In this game, until I get the revive synergy, which I think I need Mia for. The only other way I'll uh, be able to revive someone is uh, by new chest. Hello. A nut. Perfect. Uh, so until yeah, fourth character, we don't get the revive synergy, and then we're just not able. To we have to go to a sanctum in a town in order to have the priests revive our down characters. Which is a pain, as it turns out. Which is not great. Uh, but yes, Velen. Mars, Venus, and Jupiter are indicative of their elements, so Jupiter is wind, which I think makes some sense. Uh, Mars is fire, and Venus is earth. We'll also get Mer Mercury Gen eventually, which are water. Just burn all of our strongest synergies on it, that's fine. Please don't die. 58, 42. I should take one more. If. Oh, good. Forge just got touched. Um, but the problem is that Forge is slow. Uh, Forge is just more damage anyway, so. That's actually less than useful. Don't die, don't die. Damn it. Alright, Isaac, I believe. You nailed it. I'm so good at this game, guys. Well. This is gonna be. This is gonna be real annoying. Um. I should just. I should just do this. I should just do this again. We're just gonna do this. Uh, cause I'm not gonna fight Fred with one person. As it turns out, that's a bad plan. And I'm not into that. So we're just gonna head back to town. We're gonna get our guys healed up. And then we're gonna go some, do some shopping before we try again. We are going to take out Fred before we finish this though. And then I think that's where we'll call the stream. Uh, as long as we take our threat. And then get access up towards the uh, Mercury Lighthouse. Oh, crap. Luckily, Isaac's pretty strong, so... We're actually not too worried about these guys. They're all chunks. And our money situation is suddenly in really good shape, even with having to heal. The healing is annoying. But where's our sanctum? Nope, it certainly isn't there. There it is. Hello. He's reviving. Yes. 
our old sage man, who is the exact same sprite uh, as our elder that sent us on the whole quest. Perfect. Some of, some of the elders can actually tell that they're being mind -grit. Some of them can't, though. Anyway, uh... Let's... Let's spend all of our cash on this. Thank you. Sword, hunter sword. Hmm. Sixty four, sixty six. Hunter sword is sixty eight. Wow. Also, is barely better than what I've got. And that upsets it the most. But, turns out we can't afford that. Not even close. We can, however, for the bad lax, because... Yeah, the uh, bandit sword is just not very good. Just not. Anyway, there we go. Uh, what do you have? Sacred Feather, Elixir, Antidote, Earth. Buy a few of those. And more game tickets. And do you have any artifacts? No. Darn. Darn. Uh -huh. Cool. Uh, actually, I wonder if we can do things in here. Not yet. Okay. Not a problem. I think we're all set to go back in. Uh, that's actually not true. You know why that's not true? There's a reason that the Jin was doing so much damage to us. It's that we kind of forgot to buy armor. matters a lot. There we go. 15 points for this button shirt. Perfect. Thanks for the game tickets. And shields we can't afford, gloves we can't afford. Statue of Vanity, isn't it? I don't know. Lame. Let's try this one more time, with feeling. All the gin set, um... I'll give you there so that doesn't screw up things. Yeah, I think that's better. There's also a more predictable set of, um, synergies. I'm still not able to help you at all. Darn. Well, 
We'll have to help out on the way back through. But, now that all the puzzles have already been solved once, they should be pretty straightforward, right? Did I actually reset? Uh, reset the ding puzzles. That's the thing. Also, I never healed Isaac. Um, that's very awkward. But, we do have a new thing. A witch's wand. Ooh, actually, there's another fun thing. You know, uh, ideas of magic wands are very popular and very real. Uh, it might come as a bit of a surprise for hearing me say that they're real, but... I also don't hate the fact that... Or the idea of that they're using these wands to indicate, uh, sort of their weather magic. Right, that's actually totally fine and legitimate. The reason why I say that is that, well, one of the things witches are perpetually blamed for is the idea that they caused XYZ bad weather. Uh, that in the great fears of witches, which is primarily after the Middle Ages, it's not really a medieval thing. Oh, sweet. We have impact, which is awesome. And you were defeated. Okay, fine. Ah, that guy probably died when it doesn't make ten. And you fell to run away. So anyway, uh, yeah. Words. The, the stun, the stun voltage being associated with the, uh, with a witch's wand, which they were often accused of using wands, um, I think more so than there is actually any sort of logic to it. Uh, I actually like that as an ability. I think it works, I think it matches what witches are accused of with some regularity. Not universally, but often. Plasma, just to, see if, just to show off Plasma. As if we didn't already have it inflicted upon us. And then you're just planning for no reason. Okay. Easy enough. And I want to be careful about my synergy management because... If I don't know those going into Tread, that's actually going to be bad news. Uh, I went the wrong way apparently. I would talk more about Paracelsus since we did run into a gnome. Um, I actually don't know a whole lot about him. He's well after my superior specialization. Uh, so, talking about magic in any sort of pre modern context is annoyingly difficult. Uh, because, yeah, I mean, you'd think that that would be the case, right? That wands imply some sort of grand ritual and longer ceremony. And surely it would be the case that folk magic wouldn't do that. Except folk magic did do that. Uh, throughout the Middle Ages and early modern period, uh, the idea of magic is always... Uh, this really sort of developed experience where uh, there is a physical object and 
a uh, incantation and burning of certain herbs and continuing layers of stuff. Wow, I mean, you can't really buy that. What's the price? So, even though it seems like you did have uh, wands being a specifically sort of elite thing, that isn't necessarily true. So instead you might have, uh, what's a good example of this? Uh, you might have an incantation inscribed on a piece of wood that you then uh, use as part of the rest of the magic, and that might be in a lay magical book. Because there are full, uh, full grimoires and of sort of lay or folk magic. That would involve using specific sticks, or bundle, bundles of sticks, or something that looks an awful lot like what we would identify as a wand. And that doesn't actually mean that it is a wand, it just looks like it. It just, it just looks like it. Uh, but, to some extent, I think you are also right that there is an elite, right, that sometimes uh, either using a sword or a wand or something is also associated with elite magic for the carving of, the drawing of, say, a summoning circle. Which is never good news, uh, someone tries to use a summon, or in the uh, Renaissance or early modern period, if someone is using a summoning circle, it's almost certainly bad news. And you should not be friends with that person. Ooh, and once again, we get stone voltage. Hey, he's paralyzed, and he's dead. Well, there was nearly something cool going on there. Ow. Uh, I think please don't get ganked. Ivan already has, like, zero defense. If he loses 10, he just, like, takes damage from existing. That's not good. Anyway. We seem to be doing okay, though. We have our... We got the Jupiter Gen up there. We have... 5 Gen total already, actually. Which is doing really good. That's doing really well. I want to save Ivan's stuff for the... for, uh, healing. Because I'm sure we're gonna need it, even with a lot, a lot more strength. Oh boy. Um... That was a very lightning-y venomous thing, wasn't it? That was a lot of lightning. Oh well. If he could stop being paralyzed, that would be awesome. Yep, still paralyzed, still can't win. Well. Ah, that goes nowhere. Okay. the pain. You get used to it after a while though. You know the game something doesn't exist, you don't speak the stuff of the language it's in, or you don't speak it well, if you do know how to read it. And then there's like three sources and you have to re piece together the whole situation from it. Yeah. 
And it's kind of a classic. Actually, now that was this way. This is where I had to back out. So what was the other door? Because there's another door there. And there's another fight here. Wow, sudden, suddenly Ivan is up to doing, like, almost similar damage to our melee guys. That's actually really good on him. Good on him. It only takes spending 800 gold on a staff for him. That's fine. Oh look, a gnome and two trolls. So, I mean, uh, this is just such a good example of sort of the problem. Oh yeah, by the way, this is how quickly we get extremely, extremely overpowered. Right, he, we're level 8, and we're already, to, we're already able to just drop volcanoes on someone. A single someone, but still just, you know, randomly drop it. But also, this is such a good example of, uh, the way that this game sort of freely blends stuff, because, you know, we have a gnome, a creature invented in the 16th century, as part of a sort of hidden underground first thing who knows magic, a thing who knows stuff, flanked by a 19th century, or actually really a 1970s iteration of a being that takes this form in the 18th or 19th century that derives itself all the way back to medieval materials. And that's how... That's how quickly we get around to just blending uh, mythology for very little... Um, With very little rhyme or reason, I suppose to say. I don't think that there's no rhyme and no reason, but uh, I think a lot of the rhyme is out of Dungeons and Dragons and that whole experience of things, more than out of any particular. Now. Yeah, out of any uh, particular thought process or. Terribly deep understanding of where these come from. Because I'm pretty sure, like, the idea that they heal themselves is also coming straight out of Dungeons and Dragons, right? Because these guys heal themselves 10 HP every turn. And that's, I think, is just like the random hardiness. Not actually, I guess, a specific deliberate reference to a thing. actually the way I need it to go, so that's good. But yeah, you know, it's just, it's just super cool. It, it seems, I like how the, the game does it, because while I just said that there's not super deep thought, not super deep thought is not the same as no thought. And like, this isn't our... No thought, I think, would be brainlessly using it as a... Uh, brainlessly going, hey look, it's a... It's a garden gnome. Gnomes are clearly that. But no, they look more like wizards here. Which... Oh. Is that how that's supposed to work? I think I know how that's supposed to work. Three, four, five. Yeah. Got it. Also, we don't die from this. We just crushed our ankles. Absolutely slaughtered them. But we're in the heart of the tree. 
Oh man. Oh man. It is the world famous uh, treant. Hope to find it kindly self. Uh, never I'll come down here and now you shall never leave. Uh, will, will we? Also, yeah, he's just a giant horrifying will of the west. Look at him. Look at this. This is terrifying. Absolutely awful. But luckily, we hit him real hard. Ow. He hits us just as hard. Ow. Ow. Uh, let's pull out granite. Because that buys us another round, basically. Uh, let's show off Volcano. Nope. Volcano. And granite protects us, which is awesome. Just seriously reduce the damage we're gonna take this time. And 63 damage. And Ramses. We're just gonna throw the power of ancient Egypt at him, and that's gonna be fine. Doesn't it? It seems like such a good idea. Uh, what's our design here? I see, like, some rubies. Really not a lot, but... It only vaguely even looks like a, uh... You know, existing... Anyone? Ow. Uh... 71 damage. And firepower goes up, and... That seems ready to go again. Perfect. Spire. Okay, now. Let's actually... Impact you. So you got even more damage. Ow. Good lord. Then we're gonna have to start healing. Unless we can burn this guy even faster, we're about to be in a lot of trouble. Nope. Garrett should be okay another round, so... We'll just do this. Uh, so... We are t we are um, teaching the tree how to be kind through exceptional acts of violence. Uh, the tree forgot how to be nice because this is actually just the plot of the Edmund from Lord of the Rings. So the people of town came in to cut down the forest, and he got real mad and turned them all into trees. But he was injured in the process and now is dying. And he's really angry about that. And so we're teaching him how to be nice to people again. By force. Uh, actually, let's heal Garrett. Uh, Garrett actually wants to just attack. Annoyingly. Hey, we're done. I guess we can just win, and that saves our synergy. Yeah, he does protect nature, but she's being a jerk about it, and so his lady wife, uh, partner, companion, Laurel, asked us to uh, teach him how to be kind through violence. And see, now that we've punched him a bunch of times, he knows how to be nice to people again. Video games. No, wait, no, don't die. Uh huh, we need several something. Oh, also, just like in general, don't die. Um, we need you to just not do that. Uh-oh. Well, this isn't good.
You know, the people in town mentioned something about... Exactly. We, we punched the badness within him. No, L Laurel. Fine. Yeesh. Yeah, yeah, we did, we did nothing wrong. We came here afterwards, and because we are magic children, uh, we're fine. We're all fine. Yep. Nothing to see here. We promise. But... I did- I came in after the fact. You can't blame me. I'm not a murderer. I just punched one tree. And some trolls. And some gnomes. And a lot of spiders. If you wanna blame anyone... If you wanna blame anyone, blame her. Yes, you are responsible. See? Miku. Bl blame her. She's a jerk. Yeah, let me in. Yes. Let me in so I can steal all their stuff. Miku! <laughs> Why are you like this? <laughs> I am the kid who did nothing wrong and just... Uh-huh. Cool. Well, we'll look forward to getting that real soon. Uh, I just need to find a way to save the tree from being, uh, very dead. Indeed. What is the book? Wow. Also, she's married. Sorry, I wanted to talk to the maid. Uh-huh. Anxious to please her regardless of cost. Yeah. Uh, the narrator's gonna be in our case and everything. Fine. Follow the red carpet. Or I could not do that and instead raid the rest of the place. Huh? We already went. Yeah, we already went. Don't worry about it. Wild. I'm not sure how... I mean, that sounds incredibly cool. Like, African oral, oral literature sounds pretty great. Uh... But I don't think that has much of anything to do with gnomes. I'll be honest, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. Anyway, let's go talk to our rich lord and figure out what the heck is going on here. Lord McCoy. We just need passage up top. Also, look at that face. We see many a man to Inta Kalima Forest, but another one has returned. <laughs> also, he's Scottish, in case he. well. Actually, technically, should be Irish, should Mick. Yeah. He's offended that we're like 17. Hey, we're like, we're like, yep, we already did. We, we 
not any bit. Wait, what? We we already took care of it. Guys, have you? Have you guys already forgotten? Hey, stop it! Okay. And the stereotypically written, um, Scots accent. Well, that's just... Lovely. Okay, but we, we already... They seem to have not realized that we already, like, beat up Trap. Our heroes have forgotten the thing they already did. But that's not the direction I'm going, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, that guy's not dwarf, he's just Scottish. I'm pretty sure that the reason he has a Scottish accent is just because he's Scottish. Not because he's a he is a dwarf or any sort of fancy being. Uh, but yes, I think Kappa Crab though to answer the question in general. I don't know whether we can pin it entirely on DD, but certainly fancy movies, broadly, I think are absolutely the correct person or group of things to blame for that whole experience. Uh when do we meet some? We may not meet any until Lost Age. We might, we might not meet any until the next game. Which we will do eventually, because the, the second game is rad. I played the second game first, and there's some... I had no idea what was going on with the story, but it was still excellent. But turns out when that's the only game you can find in the used section at GameStop, that's the game you get. That fun. Once again, I screw up my controls. Uh, gin, granite, give. Synergy, drill. Look at this. You just. They actually need you to manipulate the gin in order to accomplish things. Yeah! I mean, this is a D&D weapon, right? This, this is THE classic D&D weapon. I'm gonna give that to you. And we'll trade it for the Hunter Sword. And then we'll equip that, because that should be- No, that's actually less- that's a lot less damage. Oh no, it is more damage. Okay. We're good. We're good. And, I mean, you know it's a D&D &D thing, because... It is... Oh yeah. Ghouls. That's another mythological thing, isn't it? Fine. 
Uh, anyway, the Elder Maker uh, does the most classic D&D uh, ability called the Vorpal Slash. So, this is one that we can actually explicitly link to high-level magic items in the tradition of tabletop role-playing games. Because that's, as far as I can find, totally made up at the time. Actually, attack, attack, plasma. There we go. Vorpal Slash, there it is. Boom. Huge animation. Just absolutely incredible. Anyway. So, uh, ghouls are another type of undead. Uh, shocking, I know. Truly, if you play D&D, this is the most surprising kind of events. But, this time they're not from a Haitian, or a random everywhere, or whatever uh, context. They're from actually an, uh, or pre-Arabic context. Uh, so, or sorry, pre-Islamic Arabic context. So they're extremely old. Meaning pre-6th century, but... One, one of very many things that are associated with various undead... ...and rot and unpleasant things. As, I'm not sure why they're usually depicted as things. Right? I think this is probably coming out of modern monster movies, as a lot of their de depiction here is. But I've got, uh, they also seem to be very, very magical, which is not ideal, as it turns out. Oh, yeah, but they're not immune to waffle slashes. Oh, it is Jabberwocky, isn't it? God dang it. Uh, this is what I get for not l looking up fully rigorously everything. Yep. As great as the Jabberwocky is as a poem, uh, I should have realized that actually. Uh, oh well. It's fine. and then it melts, because there's... <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, we'll need a rain on that, and then build that up, and then... be able to do stuff. Is this an exit? That's an exit to the walls. Okay. I want to see what's behind here, then. Anyway. Uh-huh, <laughs> uh, the Arabic word should be rul. Which is honestly a way better word. Not gonna lie, it's just it's just better. Ooze, ooze, and no. Oh, by the way, also oozes are just palette swaps of slimes because this game. I mean, it's on the Game Boy Advance. What do you really want from it? Like, what do you really want from a game released in 2001? It's got like seven kilobytes of memory. So there's a lot. I mean, yeah, are you kidding me? This game is huge for being in 2000. Or from 2001. This game is massive and incredibly detailed. But. That does mean that they don't have. Uh, lots of room for monsters, and so they just palette swap a bunch of things. So an ooze is not any more a mythological thing than a slime is. It's just. These ones are blue. The same thing, but blue. Is it like good? Like, fair play to them. The palette is. Uh, the sprite is good to begin with, and so the palette swap works. Oh, this 
fasted yet. I realize they go fast. With four of them, uh, potentially really dangerous. And yeah. Yay! Oh, thank god, we got the higher level cure. Cure well. I don't think that's the cure all, though. Yeah, that's just cure people more. That being said, we probably need to cure all the people again. Anyway, uh, as you can tell, we are now uh, up north. Gnome, 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 and a bear. Three gnomes and a bear. And they call it a mauler, but it's just it's just a bear. Exactly, right? So they can't actually do Cura or Cure 2 or you know, any of the actual Final Fantasy things, but it's what it is. It's just it's just Final We need upgrades of spells. A la Final Fantasy. And so we have them. Right here, right now. And look, it's the exact same fight as last time. Huzzah! Huzzah! But we are almost at the next time. And you know, the next time is actually going to be where we stop. Because we're not going to dare go up to the lighthouse. Tonight. Don't run away, hey, you didn't run away. Maximum things. But, look at this cute town. And look at that lighthouse up there. Right in the corner. Yeah, it turns out it's a grizzly bear. It lives up north, so it's a Kodiak bear, right? That's how that works. Also a Mars Jenny around, I think. Somewhere? Is it inside the snowman? It might be inside the snowman. Anyway though, we will pick that up next time. So, uh, we're at the end of the stream. If you enjoyed this, make sure you're followed, if you are not already, and subscribe to the Twitch channel here, because that is the best way to support the channel. And let me know you want more like this. Uh, next stream is not going to be Saturday like the normal one. Uh, it is instead going to be Sunday, and hopefully we will have our Mesoamerican expert on, uh, Saturdays, to, uh, play some Curse of the Dead Gods, which is not trying to be in any way, shape, or form related to the Maya, but it uses Mayan, Maya imagery, so we're gonna pretend it is anyway. Next time we come back to this, of course, we'll have, um, Grand problems of ice physics, and a lot of them. Look at these Pokemon ice physics. Hmm. Look at these interesting problems. It'll be a time. Anyway. Uh, also coming up, May 16th is a big day. May 16th is what we call a very big day. Because, uh, that Sunday is going to be, uh, the AC Valhalla DLC stream. Which is the Thunderdome. Yes, that NPC is shipping on control of Sure. Okay, it just blocks it so I can get this. Turns out we did get in here anyway because I take too long to do my closing. Four historians versus one video game. So I have uh, three friends who are all PhD students in relevant bits of the uh, British Isles and the Celtic speaking world, plus myself being our resident Norse specialist, to tackle. Uh, the Wrath of the Druids DLC in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So that's coming up not this Sunday, but next Sunday. 
And also before then, we're going to be playing some Age of Empires 1. If you check out the street, the schedule tab, uh, that should have everything up to date uh, coming up soon. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we'll be back to this in a couple of weeks, I promise. Uh, probably, yeah, not this coming Wednesday, but Wednesday after that, we'll probably come back to this, because I do love this game. We've got a lot more to go. So, yeah, I hope you all have a good rest of your week. And also, make sure you check the About section for my YouTube channel where I'm working on a video. But you know what? Let's reveal what the video is going to be. It's going to be explaining medieval magic through Dark Souls. So make sure you're subscribed. Uh, that'll be out before the end of the month. And join the Discord where uh, there's a lot of really fun, weird conversations that happen all the time. So, lots of big stuff for the channel coming up. Make sure you're followed to be notified for all of it. Otherwise, I hope you all have a good rest of your week, and I will catch you all on the next one.